Hello and welcome to Somerville Neighborhood News. Today is July 1st. I'm Tarsha Stack. And I'm Dennis Stack. Somerville Neighborhood News is a community service production of SCAT TV, put together by staff, interns, and your neighbors. We bring you the news every two weeks on Channel 3 and on our website, SomervilleNeighborhoodNews.org, where you can read and watch the news. That's right. Now we post the videos of the top stories and we also have them written out so you can watch and read the segments that interest you. Yes, Tarsha. We want to deliver the news in a way that best suits everyone, and we hope you will share our stories with others by sending a link or posting to Facebook. Or just lean off your porch and tell your neighbor. Tonight, our reporters bring you stories about kids gardening, local jobs on the construction of the Green Line Extension, and about Somerville soccer fans cheering, but also questioning the colossal cost of the World Cup. And we also have a look at the city's sports fields and an interview with the not artist. What is a not artist? The person who has been painting not art all over town. Interesting. But first, let's look at some of the news and events around town. Summer is here, and so are all the great events brought to you by the city of Somerville. Catch the local Independence Day celebration on July 3rd at Trump Field. There will be four musical performances starting at 6 p.m. and then 30 minutes of fireworks. Some neighborhood streets will be closed for the event, so check the city's websites for details. SomervilleMA.gov There are lots of other events coming up. Art Beat in Davis Square is July 18 and 19. There are outdoor movies, there's a senior picnic in August, and much more. Check out the full list on the city website. Big news. Last week, after months of deliberations, the Somerville Redevelopment Authority chose a partnership called US2 out of Chicago to be the master developer of Union Square. Was that a recommendation from the city's advisory committee? Not exactly. It was kind of the second choice. We'll have more in a future newscast. Here's another piece of news. Last week, the Board of Aldermen approved a final budget for fiscal year 2015. They have made changes. Some things were added and others taken away. To get the full picture, check out the local Somerville newspapers. The board also voted unanimously on a resolution asking that all governments, institutions, and individuals divest from all fossil fuel-related investments. What exactly does that mean? Among other things, it means the board hopes that the city will divest its pension funds and other investment funds from any companies that deal in coal or oil. You know, Somerville isn't alone on this. There's a worldwide divestment movement that is gathering steam. Well, we'll have our reporters do a more complete report soon. Wow, great. Now, let's go to the news. First up, Here's an update of a story we did back in 2013. After almost a year of meetings and negotiations, officials from the Massachusetts Department of Transportation, the MBTA, and agencies from the cities impacted by the Green Line extension finally launched job programs for people in Somerville, Cambridge, and Medford. Xu King Zhao brings us the story. On June the 18th, officials celebrated the official kickoff of the Massachusetts Workforce Initiative, or WIN program. The project will provide jobs and job training for the communities most impacted by the Green Line extension. It's really a, a real moment of celebration. Uh, we have all been working on this very, very, uh, really, really hard. And they're just on mega projects like this, we have opportunities to be able to bring tremendous resources together if we all work together. And that's really what the WIN program is about. So we're excited. 
from a relocated Lichmere station in Cambridge to Union Square in Somerville and College Avenue in Medford. A big project like this brings more than just travel options. Uh, there will be uh, at least a few hundred jobs that are uh, going to be not all available for some of them, but that's the workforce size that we're going to need. And depending on the skill set and, and what there are uh, in, for uh, journeymen and apprentices in some of them, Medford, Cambridge, that'll determine how many, uh, how many jobs are available for the jobs for some of them. Literally what's happening is that they're going through and taking it by types of jobs, when do they actually wind up phasing into the project, and then looking at all of the resources that there are already existing apprenticeship programs and all that. The training will target low-income and minority residents. Vin Hardy of the Somerville Community Corporation, which has been working to get the program going from the start, is optimistic that it will be a good thing for the community. We don't know exactly how many jobs, but what it's going to be are like entry level, particularly the um, pre-apprenticeship, the apprenticeship programs. Those are the ones that we're really going to target. So um, a young person right now getting involved in the pre-apprenticeship program could actually be a journeyman by the time the Green Line's finished with Route 16. The Somerville Community Corporation celebrated the program in Union Square with Mayor Joseph A. Curtoni and others on June 24th, 2014. And it's fantastic to see those opportunities for Somerville at Assembly, the Green Line, but we're going to work together to make sure that happens in Union Square. I do want to thank Governor Patrick, Secretary David, Dr. Bev Scott, and all the Mass Start MBTA teams for being open-minded, for working together with us as a team. One, for bringing the Green Line to Somerville. Construction has already started at the Medford Avenue Bridge, which is being widened to create space for two more tracks. Concrete will be poured to create platforms. The trucks will be laid sometime next year. Work is on hold for the moment, but will start again after the 4th of July. Behind me is a Medford Bridge, one of the eight bridges that are under construction as part of the Green Line Extension project. Workers say as construction moves forward, some jobs will go to Somerville residents. Reporting for Somerville Neighborhood News, I'm Chu Jing Zhao. Sounds like a great program. I heard it's modeled than one they did in Denver, where over 150 low-income people got jobs. We keep our viewers informed about how they can apply. If you want to keep up with the Green Line Extension news, go to greenlineextension.eot.state.ma.us. Thanks, Tarsha. Next, we'll have a report on the city's recreation fields. We have 18 of them. Sounds like enough, but seems like it's not. That's right. Some civilians don't like sitting still. More and more youth and adult teams are using the fields, and this is creating some challenges. Ji Hong Li brings us the first of several reports. At the moment, we are standing in the middle of Lincoln Park Field at the Argenziano School. Uh, this is where the youth soccer league and other youth sports and recreational groups use the field. So one of the problems with this field in particular is that it's a hard packed surface and it has not been maintained properly or aerated properly or watered properly. So you've got these areas of dry patch that are very compacted and hard. The other problem is the materials that were used when they put this field back in um, seem to be bubbling up pieces of glass. You can't just have fun without thinking of walking on something or your friends or family getting hurt and ruining your fun time. It's too dangerous. The city of Somerville has 18 playing fields in 10 parks, but officials recognize that's not enough. I think we have some we have a good recreation department, we have great staff, um, but we also have, it's difficult with the number of open field spaces that we have to provide programming for, um, to provide adequate programming. There's more of a demand for field space than we have. So often some of the fields are, are overused or appear to be overused. It isn't right that Lincoln Park should have 1,200 uses and then perhaps uh, another field, even if it's less desirable, has very few. The city's playing fields were used almost 8,000 times in 2013, according to a recent study by Gale Associates. 
That study also said that some of these fields are overused and that many are in fair to poor condition. Two of the ten parks are owned by the state. Some of them doesn't control their maintenance. You know, it, will the state fix up those parks? Should the city get control of those spaces? How do you work out the management piece? If it's a state-owned park, um, how does Somerville permit that park and get, get the right number of uses and ensure that those spaces are well maintained? There's a, it opens up a lot of questions. And so the city is working on all those things. I think the mayor should probably be commended. He's pursuing you know, several options with the state for um, either owner, direct ownership or control of those spaces. Foss Park has two fields that need serious work. The city has been talking about renovating Lincoln Park for almost two years. I've been involved with communications with the city over this for more than two years, but I know particularly they started a dialogue back in September of 2012 talking about renovating this field space and here we are in 2014, almost two years to the date, shy a couple months that the field is still what it is. I don't think that there's been a, a delay. I mean, I think it's just part of a process. I think often people, when they hear of something, you know, they think, oh, well, because I heard about it, it's going to happen. It often takes a while for those things to happen, whether it's putting the funding in place or gathering the information that you need to make the best plans and to really address the alternatives. Gail Associates has made several recommendations to the city. This is um, a potential plan for, um, for Dillboy. You can see here's the existing stadium, and then there are the fields, the existing auxiliary fields down here. And so we wanted to look at these fields and see how they could be redeveloped. Among other changes, Gail recommends increasing the number of artificial turf fields from two to four or five. Personally, I don't have an opinion turf versus natural grass. I would like to see our local administration do something that best uses this facility so multiple uses can occur, that lots of things can happen here. Um, there's upsides to synthetic turf and there's upsides to grass. Again, I don't have a particular uh, stake in it that I just want to see something happen here first and foremost. It's been too long and nothing's been done that Lincoln Park renovations are on hold while the city looks at all the recreation fields together. The mayor recently set up a new task force that is discussing the recommendations from Gale, the advantage or distraction of the artificial turf and other issues. Tough decisions ahead. We'll take a look at some of them in another report. For some of the news, I'm Jihan Li. So, this task force has some big decisions to make artificial turf versus grass, and I wonder if the state park fields can be improved. We'll have to tune into Ji Hong's next report if we want to learn more. Now here's something about some pretty big playing fields in Brazil. Have you been watching some of the World Cup matches, Dennis? Well, kind of. A, Ireland didn't make it into the finals, but now I'm rooting for Team USA. A lot of other Somerville residents are also rooting for their teams. They've been glued to their TV screens. Justin Page brings us more. The 2014 World Cup kicked off on June 12th, and Brazilians in Somerville are keeping a closer eye on the tournament than ever before. World Cup is in Brazil, so I am actually rooting for like Latin countries to be in the final. I'm cheering for Brazil and I hope that Mexico does very well and we'll see who wins. The match on June 16th pitted Brazil against its Latin American rival, Mexico. Doing very well at the moment. Um, I do think that I am cheering for Brazil. I think it may be close. I'm, I want to say 2-1. Fans just next door at El Potro Mexican restaurant didn't feel quite the same way. I am here to support Mexico. And if we win this game, if Mexico wins this game, it's an automatic pass to the next one. Mexico.
Mexico is in the World Cup is a great thing. Um, and it's against the host team, so it's a, just a huge game in terms of soccer and just like all the, all the folks that come to watch a game like this. Oliveira's restaurant was also packed with fans taking in the action. But the match wasn't the only thing on people's minds. The 2014 World Cup is the most expensive to date. Brazil is spending $11 billion. Some question the government's decision, since 31 million Brazilians are poor and have to live on only $1.25 a day. I think that, you know, government, in my point of view, should be more aware of what is it the people need, not with just what the people want. I mean, you wanting something is, is, is one thing. You needing something is something totally different. And I think that, you know, government and president and people that actually run the country actually have to put more attention to that. Um, I was actually in South Africa um, during the World Cup time also. And you can go to a World Cup and not see poverty. And that's, that's horrible. And I think that, that there's enough media coverage in all other parts of the sporting event, but not necessarily looking at all the protesters that are uprising around the World Cup um, who are um, at worker rights who are protesting around the airport who are not working or like shifting their schedules to create some form of um, um, instability in terms of a social movement against the World Cup. After the World Cup this year, Brazil will host the Summer Olympics in 2016. In January, news reports said the cost would be $2.3 billion, and that price tag was expected to rise. For Somerville Neighborhood News, I'm Justin Page. Maybe sports fans forget that someone has to pay for all the stadiums and security and everything. Now, let's see what's in the Somerville Journal. <laughs> Hello, this week in the Somerville Journal, we'll have the latest on the four candidates for police chief, a look at pr trying to preserve the Union Square post office, and coverage of an ongoing Americana music event at PAs every week. You can check us out at wickedlocal.com slash Somerville, follow us online on Twitter at villejournal.com, and get in touch with me at dakinson at wickedlocal.com or 617-629-3385. On June 9th, the mayor and other officials helped Groundwork Somerville inaugurate a field. A field? In the middle of the city? Yep, that's right. Somerville is breaking new ground, pun intended, <laughs> in the field. Oops, there's another <laughs> pun. <laughs> of urban agriculture. Really? Yes, it's part of what the city calls the food triangle. From seed to farm to plate, and it starts with kids who learn to garden at the same time as they learn about plants. Como ustedes saben, estamos en la unidad de las plantas, la unidad de las plantas. ¿Qué plantaste tú? Sandía y pumpkin. ¿Cómo se llama esta que está empezando a crecer con la primera hojita? Plántula. Plántula, excelente. ¿Y después cómo fue el proceso? ¿Cómo lo plantaste? Pone las semillas adentro del suelo. The two bilingual third grade classes at the East Somerville Community School spent the spring learning about plants with the help of Groundwork Somerville. This year, for the first time, children are planting their seedlings outside and one half of their produce will go to the city's mobile market. Okay, ready? Put your hands out and I'll put it in it. No, no don't! There's a seed there! So today was the culmination, really, of the third grade classes project where they started seedlings from seed and got to watch them grow in their classroom and today was the day where they got to bring out the seedlings to transplant into the gardens. There we go. Okay, and now this one will have plenty of room to grow. Now you need to dig a hole. Does anyone have a spare trowel? They only plant in one. Nosotros plantamos nuestras semillas en el jardín para que crezca las frutas y vegetales. Okay. After you plant, you want to plant in the seed in the ground. You maybe want to give it a little bit of um, some water, 
and just leave it there because it wants some space and air and some sunlight. I love um, gardening because um, I, I experience a lot of stuff. They know now that this is going to be helping the community. That's the most important because we are part of the community. And, and if we start now teaching the children, planting the seed that you, even in third grade, can start helping the community, they're going to be stick with them for the rest of their life. The East Somerville Community School is part of a citywide effort. On June 9th, Groundwork Somerville inaugurated the extension of its South Street Farm with the help of Mayor Joseph Curtitoni, State Agriculture Commissioner Greg Watson, and other supporters. You know, Somerville has been at the forefront of healthy living and sustainability. So what we're doing here with the expansion of farming to the South Street Farm, with the passage of the, city, the state's first ever urban agriculture ordinance, what we did earlier at the Innovation Farm over at the Edgeley School, is really consistent with a set of community values. Somerville is a classic, the first city to come up with an urban ag ordinance, the first city to come up with a program in urban agricultural ambassadors. This is, a, I think, an ex a real example and real leadership on the part of Somerville. I think it's really one of the, in terms of land area, it's one of the smallest, one of the most densely populated communities or, or, or cities in, in the United States. Um, but to show that, you know, that they can take small parcels of land, really try to do what they can to farm them intensively and sustainably, gives hope for a lot of people. So I think this is a great, great example. In a few weeks, those dirt patches at the South Street Farm Extension will soon look like this. The lettuce and produce grown here and by Somerville students will soon be on their way to a mobile farmer's market. Reporting for Somerville Neighborhood News, I'm Margaret Haig. Have you seen signs and other things with the words not art painted on them? Yes, what's that all about? Our reporters wanted to know too. So they tracked down the artist. You mean they're not artists. <laughs> right. Anyways, they tracked him down. He's been doing not art for eight years. He agreed to talk, but only if he could wear a mask. He wants to keep his identity separate from his art. You mean he's not art. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dennis. <laughs> Uh, of course, I've been an artist since I was born. Uh, little, little kids always are painting and drawing and stuff like that. I just never stopped. You know, but de definitely before I came up with this idea, I was trying to figure out how to get people to pay attention to what I was doing, to the ideas in my art. And, um, you know, there just wasn't a forum for that. You can see it's falling apart. Um, I have a tendency to really enjoy these, you know, beautiful old objects that sort of tell some kind of story. So it's not always about uh, being flashy and, you know, getting everybody's attention. It's more, a lot of the time for me, it's, just, it's the subtlety of, uh, and the imagination of somebody enjoying um, the experience of seeing the knot art there, almost as if it's a scavenger hunt sometimes. You know, this is uh, clearly not art, but, uh, you know, what makes it art or not is up to the viewer. You know, it's almost just asking that question, you know, is this art, is it an art, where does it come from, what is it for? So, as I was saying, I, I actually lost my second job as a waiter, um, with, well, two jobs in about like, three months or something. It was ridiculous. And it was just like a sign that I got to do this full time. And then ever since then, the, the feedback has been so positive. Uh, the idea right now of, of, of like trying to make it, uh, try to survive off of my art, pretty overwhelming. Like, if I think about it, I don't think I could be in a better situation. Here I feel like it's pretty saturated with, you know, when I hear people say, I see it everywhere, and I think, well, it's definitely not everywhere because I'm very specific in where I'm putting it, you know, I'm trying to get people to pay attention to a certain location, a certain context, um, you know, I want people to look around the 
tag and see the beauty of what I'm trying to really draw attention to. There isn't a huge graffiti and street art presence uh, anywhere in Boston. Um, so I think, you know, this was in a way what Boston Somerville sort of needs, you know, uh, just a little fun thing to interact with on, uh, on people's way to work. Yeah, I'm planning on staying here. I'm not going to be moving to Brooklyn like everybody else. To try to pull this off without upsetting anybody, yeah, it's going to be almost impossible. But I don't, I don't want to destroy people's property. Um, and I want people to look at it and say, is this okay? Is this legal? Should this be legal? Uh, you know, to walk a fine line between uh, what is legal, what is illegal, what is art, and what is not art. You know, it's always these kind of da this dance between the two, uh, the two extremes. Last, to kick off summer, let's hear from some of our neighbors on the topic of summer in Somerville. Our question for you today is, what's your favorite thing to do in Somerville in the summertime? Somerville in the summertime can be tough because there's no body of water, but um, the best we can do is, you know, shade. So I love taking long walks on the community path and getting ice cream at J.P. Licks. We like to come over here a lot because there's always something going on in Lincoln Park. Softball, we watch the softball. Uh, the sprinklers are always on. Oh, me gusta caminar por las calles, venir de compras. Ahora vengo de comprar comida para la semana. I hang out in Cambridge a lot, go to shows. Uh, any live music that's playing anywhere. Attending pro summer programs, then going to the swimming pool. On Sundays, I like to go to the flea. Davis Flea is awesome. Um, get some coffee. You hang out with friends and play basketball. Is there a park you like specifically around here? Um, I usually go to the gym, maybe the Y, but uh, if anything, Conway if it's warm. Oh, and summer streets. Um, that's always a great. I love that the city does that, closing the streets so you can see all the array of different types of people that live here and that I love that just the culture the diversity and exploring seeing new businesses new parks new parts of the city it's really nice to live in a community that really celebrates arts and music yeah I wish there was like more community program especially for families and kids together so that uh, you know I don't have to worry about my kids well I'm, I'm a high school teacher so for me I spent all of the year looking forward to Somerville in the summertime. I love to walk through the park. I love to go to block 11 and get a sandwich. Um, anything I can do with this little lady, I'm very, very happy to do. Well, that wraps up this newscast. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back on July 15th. But don't just tune in once every two weeks. Check us out online at somervilleneighborhoodnews.org or go to our Facebook page and share your favorite segments. Or send a tweet at SCATTVSNN. We welcome you to get involved with Somerville Neighborhood News. What's happening on your block? Who's your neighborhood hero? What issues aren't being covered? Become a reporter or just send in your ideas. Call us at 617-628-8826 or write to news at scatvsomerville.org. I'm Tarsha Stack. And I'm Dennis Stack. See, See you around, around the, the neighborhood. neighborhood. No, let's talk yes. about you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to talk about going away. Or